Hello, today we are talking with Thomas Edward Seymour about his new film, London Betty. Tom, good to see you. Hey, good to see you. Oh, I work day. with Tom over at Black 20. We've been together for about well, two, almost three years. Yeah, yeah, almost three years. Yep. And uh, I don't know if everyone knows, but you do a lot of the mashups and the trailers that have gotten a lot of attention to Black 20. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've done, uh, I think for Black 20, I've done almost 50 pieces of video. And what are some of the more like the, the bigger ones and more popular ones that maybe people would know? The one that you know, the one that gets the most attention is the 300 PG version, yeah. which everyone calls Cake Town. Yeah. And uh, that one's funny because I, I knew it was getting popular when um, you'd see all these nicknames pop up on the World of Warcraft, and it would be Cake Town 2020. Oh, so you see this stuff? In the, oh, yeah, sorry. yeah, and that so that one's got well over 10 million views. Well, if it's on World of Warcraft, it's definitely huge. There's no question. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and well, I mean, what other things have you done? There's... Oh yeah, uh, another popular one is uh, the Battle of the Batman's. So yeah. I took Batman footage, and made them look like they're fighting each other, and then Quantum of Bonds is another one I did, which is a uh, Pierce Brosnan versus Daniel Craig, which I thought was kind of funny. And there's, is there anything you're working on specifically now in Black Twenty that you wanted to tout or? Uh, I'm working on a. I'm working on a piece about uh, Jason Voorhees, which uh, should come out soon. That's um, that should be pretty pretty funny, I think. How many views or like hits or I don't know if they're saying these days have these have these things gotten or received? The, the the work that I've done, I think it's around 20 million. 20 million views. It could easily be 25, but 20 20 is a good safe estimate. Could say it's a good high number actually. Now let's get into London Betty. I mean, it's a feature film. This yes. Is, this is not a, you know an internet video. This is a full length feature film. Yeah. Comedy. Um, what? What, where'd you get the idea? Um, well, I, w I was actually, um, I had gotten laid off from a job. Uh, the, the place actually went under, and they, it was an editing facility. And so I was collecting unemployment. Sure. And uh, it was awesome, and I thought yeah, it was the, the best great. thing ever. And so I, I just got to thinking, I was like, man, you know, how could one survive and not work and what would they do and I just kept thinking of you know these thieves that would only thieves with manners that would only steal from people's backyards and they had principles and, and so so I thought okay the tchotchke thieves I thought you know um, this, that, that's what I would call them and so that's where I came up with the concept. Well how many it seems like you've been you've done a number of feature films how many feature films have you have you produced or directed or written or been a part of? Um, I've d written and directed seven Wow. And uh, so um, three or four of them are horror, and then was it three or horror, horror, and then the other uh, four are sort of either comedy. I did a drama. I did a, a sort of tall tale comic book adventure. Yeah. I do lean towards comedy, but yeah. I I think there's comedic elements in almost every one of those films. But um, I don't. You know, a lot of what people do say about me is I don't specifically have a genre. And actually, the next one I'm doing is straight horror. Which uh, with no humor in it, which is going to be sort of my first pure horror film. What's the film. name of that? That's going to be an adaptation of uh, Rudyard Kipling's *Mark of the Beast*. Uh, okay, so you've you've won something like 14 awards. Is there any uh, award that sticks out in your mind, or special to you, or? Well, I won. Uh, there's a few. Um, I got in 2001. I shared an Auteur of the Year award with uh, Mike Aransky, who actually we work with. And that was at the Bare Bones Film Festival. And then another one was, um, another film I did was called The Land of College Profits. And that won five awards at the New York B-Movie Awards. And that was just an awesome night because, uh, I don't know, just to, to be called up and get to, yeah. to accept that many awards. The stage and the whole thing, the lights and the... Yeah. Well, what, uh, like, is there a film you're most proud of or you, you enjoy the most or... I did a movie called Everything Moves Alone and that was a drama. Um, it was a comedic drama. In that... I do like that one. I look at it now, it seems a little dated, but it did open doors for me. That's one of the first films I did where it had a New York City theatrical run, and it, it did open some doors. But then I did another one called The Land of College Profits, and that one um, was an actual like critical success where you know more reviewers liked it than not, and uh, it ended up being a bestseller for the company. So um, it's between those two. I do. Uh, I do a horror series. It's actually a trilogy right now, but we're going to be doing a fourth one called the Bikini Bloodbath series. Seen, these are great. I've seen these. Hilarious. <laughs> Thanks. And they're, they're, um, it's funny when people hear the name, they think, they think the worst of them. But then when they actually go and see them, they realize it's just kind of wacky, you know, scary movie type, um, you know, dick and fart jokes. Oddie and fart jokes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, um, 
Yeah, it, you know, people tend to like them. Do you, do you find your personal comedy styles or the type of comedy you like is more of a broad, dick and fart joke kind of comedy, or is it just what you think you're good at doing, or I mean, maybe it's both? I think the, I think the comedy I do is actually very quirky, and I, I think it, it, in some sense, is broad. part of it's broad. Dick and fart jokes are great, right? But it's also a little, uh, it's a you know a little um, off the beaten path. I think you know it has more in line with like Monty Python yeah. than like uh, Judd Apatow or, or more things silly, like that. More... I guess what I mean is that all the comedy isn't generated from those dick and fart jokes. Do you put a lot of truths into this about your life, or truths about things you've seen, or? I, it's more. London Betty is more about sort of a world that I'd like to be in. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a reality that's a little sweeter, yeah. and even the bad guys don't really have teeth so much. They're not so vicious. And, um, y you know, the characters are crass, and they, they have rough edges, but ultimately, you know, hopefully Anya still cares about them. So it, it's all about, you know, for me, is manufacturing these, these, these worlds. And well, what do you hope to accomplish with London Betty? Um, really, you know, I don't have any um, grandiose ideas. I think it's it's a it's a small indie comedy. Yeah. Um, it does have some stars in it. It's got um, Broadway actress Nicole Lewis, who's in Hair and and Rent, and Danny Von Bargen from Seinfeld. Yeah, he was great. Super Troopers, and yeah. um, narrated by Clint Howard. So it's got some stars in it, but I do think that ultimately, I'm, what I'm really looking for is a um, direct-to-video deal, but with a, with, your, with a larger company. I'd really like to be a part of like a, a Lionsgate video release, or um, you know, be it to Think Film or Screen Media, something um, something of that caliber. Like Clint Howard's everywhere. How did you get a hold of her? How did you get Clint Howard? He does the, the voice or the narration. Yeah, yeah. How did you get a hold of him? How did you get him in the movie? We, we started editing the film, and initially, I actually, my character did the narration. I realized that my character was sort of giving away too much of himself. And uh, so I realized I needed an outside narrator, and I wrote this part. And for a year, I searched for narrators, and I went through all, I don't know if you ever remember me, like, shoot my mouth off or, you know like last week I talked to Wallace Shawn's agent no, last week I shoot your mouth off yeah <laughs> we tried um, Wallace Shawn Billy Connolly Amy Sedaris um, Donald Logue um, just a ton of narrators and uh, a few of them actually would have done it and uh, what I came across Clint Howard and the thing is is like um, I had met Clint Howard at like Fangoria the Fangoria convention like six years ago and he's actually a really nice guy yeah, I've heard that. and he's got a really kind voice actually which is bizarre because you think of him in these these horror films where he's slaughtering people or or you think of him as you know like a, in Apollo 13 where he's like the you know the the nerdy oh, engineer like he you know he genuinely is a nice guy yeah. he was interested in the project and and uh, it just when I actually met the guy and we, we recorded this thing, I realized that he's absolutely the best person who could have done it because um, he is sort of like, the, the narrator's voice is supposed to be sort of like an uncle, like a buddy of yours telling you a story mm -hmm. that's going to vouch for the story and kind of bring you into it.